The Conservative mm-hmm. Party here in Canada has reiterated the call to end the homophobic and discriminatory gay blood ban. They sent a letter with a draft order to the health minister to begin the process of ending the ban. Joining me to chat about this is Conservative Member of Parliament, Eric Duncan. Eric, thanks for doing this today. I appreciate your time. Thank you for having me on the program. I appreciate it. All right. So what? why is this the right time to bring this forward? Well, it was the right time probably several years ago to do this, and we're asking the government to finally keep their promise that they made back in 2015 and again in 2019, and in 2021 they haven't kept yet. And what we're asking for, Todd, in, in proposing a safe solution to this, right now, just to give a context to listeners, every single donation that goes to Canadian Blood Services or HEMA Quebec is screened for any potential infections or issues. The, the problem with the questionnaire is, if you are a man who's had sex with a man in the last three months, and that could be in Halifax, a, a monogamous gay couple that have been married, living together for several years, yeah. the simple fact that they are gay, they're banned from donating blood. What we're saying is the questionnaire should not be based on your sexual orientation, but rather on sexual behavior, sure. regardless of whether you're gay or straight. Yeah. So we're proposing the solution. It needs to get done. And frankly, this should have been done years ago. It's a safe, easy fix that ends the discrimination. Yeah. What about other countries, other jurisdictions? What, how has this been handled? A lot of other countries and more and more countries are moving to the behavior-based questionnaire uh, about, again, uh, the number of partners you've had, protected or unprotected sex. Regardless of whether you're gay or straight, that is a risk to the blood supply, and you can still cover all of that and, and base the eligibility on that, not simply for, for being gay. I will give credit. The United Kingdom Conservative government, Boris Johnson, announced back in December that they're going to the model of where, again, back to my example of a, a monogamous gay couple that are living together. There's no reason why they should not be allowed to donate blood. There's no reason why they should be disqualified simply for being gay. So more and more countries are going and switching this, not making the blood supply and the questionnaire any more unsafe, but rather changing the question and how it's asked to get rid of any discrimination and stigma that exists. Yeah, I can't imagine. I mean, obviously, you're going to get some pushback always and, and with this type of issue from some groups. And I'm not suggesting they shouldn't have that opportunity to do that. But I can't imagine there would be a whole lot of uh, pushback on this at this point. Why not do this, right? It seems like a politically, it's, it, I don't think it would be a risk, a gamble. And I think what needs to happen, I guess. Sure, and that's why I said, you know, and, and the, my first answer is to confirm to people, to clarify, to make sure Canadians are aware that every donation is screened and it's a window period of about 14 days to a month uh, where science hasn't perfected being able to detect it. So that's why they ask all those questions of when they can't detect in that window period between an infection and it showing up in testing that is done. So I think it's important that, you know, when people understand that, they understand the solution of what we're saying is not just opening up the floodgates and just getting rid of the questionnaire or getting rid of anything, but just simply changing it. If you have multiple sexual partners, if it's unprotected sex, you're still not able to donate. But there are many gay men in this country that can safely donate, that would meet the criteria and should be allowed to do so. And I go back in the frustration, Todd, of all this, and on Pride Month, we're reinvigorating our call for this again and putting more pressure on the government. What bothers me, uh, and I know a lot of Canadians and members uh, in the LGBT community, is that the government during an election, the Liberals went out and promised it during an election, saying, yes, we'll get this done, we'll end the blood ban. And now we're going to, you know, there's men that are challenging them in court, they're trying to silence them and shut them down, and they're saying, no, uh, we don't have the ability to do it, it's Canadian blood services that can do it. The cynic in me, and I think a lot of cynical, you know, people who are cynical about this, saying, well, why don't you promise it during an election campaign? You're out going to get people's votes, and you can say, oh, yeah, don't worry, we're going to end it, we'll get it done. And then you form government, you get challenged on why you haven't delivered. Oh, it's, uh, it's independent, us, we can't control it. That's a slap in the face. If you can't do it, you shouldn't have promised it twice during an election campaign then. But we are giving the tools, and we're giving the example, showing the power through legislation the minister has, she can eliminate that question and have it replaced. She chooses not to do that. What about Canadian Blood Services? What's their commentary or what, what have they said about all of this? They're, they're saying that they're, they're researching it, they're studying it, they're looking at it right now and analyzing it, uh, which is not enough. And again, I think, Todd, whenever you talk about the solution here, being able to switch the questionnaire, I don't think that needs to be researched in the sense that there's a safe solution by changing the questionnaire to reflect 
uh, you know, uh, the behavior based that still keeps our blood supply safe and gets rid of the stigma and discrimination that's been around for too long. So the fact I, I just don't get it, the lack of political will, I believe, on the part of the government to and, and Canadian blood services, I have to say, they've been extremely slow even on the work that they say they're, they're, that they're doing on this. So uh, it's been very disheartening. And to me, it, it just goes back to show there's, uh, you know, there's a difference between giving a statement and showing up to a photo op and, and saying you've got the backs of LGBT Canadians. And then when it comes to something tangible like this, oh, I'm sorry, there's nothing we can do despite us promising, promising during an election campaign we're going to do it. I would think that Canadian, for Canadian Blood Services, uh, this would be many more people that they could get blood from, right? I mean, it's, it makes sense that they would want to get this solved. Agreed. And, and I, I, you know, I think part of the challenge may be if the criteria was going to a, heteros- a, heteros- a heterosexual individual, it may, it may turn some away. But I believe there are, numer- there are a number of men uh, that if this provision was changed, uh, that are in monogamous relationships that can meet the criteria and not just be disqualified simply for being gay, they would be. And I agree. The whole point and why I think this has been exacerbated in the last year is because of COVID. Canadian Blood Services and HEMA Quebec, they are desperate for donations and they can't have their usual mobile clinics maybe as easily as they could. So I agree that this has presented an opportunity with COVID to say, look, we can open the door to more donors to do it safely and help, you know, protect the blood supply and more, most importantly, get safe blood donations and transfusions to Canadians who need it. Eric, thank you so much. And, and I think like anything, if people are motivated by this, they, they, you could contact your member of parliament and let them know, right? Pretty simple stuff. Absolutely. Contact your local member of parliament and let them know the safe solution. I just encourage if I can put a plug in, endthebloodband.ca. People can add their voice there. And I've shared my personal story to get the word out. It would encourage people to do the same. And I appreciate the chance to be on the program today out in the East Coast to uh, to raise awareness of this. You got it. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. All right. You got it. That's uh, Eric Duncan, Conservative Member of Parliament. And I agree 100%. I can't imagine why this blood band still exists. And it is discriminatory, completely, and unnecessary as well.